She vanished without a trace from her bedroom, and now investigators are hoping that an autopsy will help shed some light on the mysterious disappearance and death of 11-year-old Selena Cass. The young girl's body was found in the Connecticut River on Monday. That's about a quarter mile from her home in New Hampshire. Police are calling her death suspicious, meaning they don't think it was an accident. Meanwhile, her stepfather has been hospitalized. Pat Brown is a criminal profiler to help us make sense of all of this. Hi, Pat. Hi. Um, I want to talk about the stepfather. His name is Wendell Noyes. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about how he behaved in the hours before Selena Cass's body was found. That her body had not been found yet when yesterday morning he was seen by neighbors clutching his head in his hands, rolling around in the driveway, laying face down in the driveway. They were so concerned they called police. Yeah. Is that the typical behavior <laughs> of someone with a missing child? Uh, well, it, no, it isn't typical. And on top of it, this was a stepfather who hadn't even been in this child's life very long. It's a little overly emotional at that point. He said two other things that really concerned me. One was when she went missing, he said, get your butt back home. Now, you, theoretically, your stepdaughter has been kidnapped. That's your response, get your butt back home, like you have no respect for her at all. And then he said uh, that his, the family was grieving, which some people say, oh, that would make sense. But, you know, this girl was supposed to be missing and hopefully coming home. You usually don't talk about grieving until it's, it's all over. So right. everything he says indicates he knows what happened to her, and he knows what happened to her. Right, I know. I mean, it seems like guilty behavior rather it, than it, grieving it, or, or it sure uh, worried is. behavior. And maybe crazy behavior because he was labeled psychotic before and put in a mental institution after he broke into his ex-girlfriend's home and tried to beat her up. I want to talk about that incident. Yeah. That was in 2003. There was a restraining order against this guy, Wendell mm -hmm. Noyes. Uh, and he broke into, despite the restraining order, he broke into his ex-girlfriend's yeah. home, threatened her with violence, and that's when he was diagnosed with schizophrenia. What does that tell yeah, you? I'm not buying it. I wonder who did this diagnosis, because to me, his behaviors seem more psychopathic than they do psychotic. So, Meaning he could control it? Oh, I, I think so. I think he wanted to get back at his ex-girlfriend. And some of the behaviors we've seen since in, uh, with this young girl's mis disappearance look to me like he doesn't, he, he's not out of control. He's not hearing voices. He's not running around doing strange things. And until he does this thing in the driveway, which to me is he's working on his insanity defense because after all, he was crazy before. He must be crazy again. Um, having said all of that, he is not charged with any That's crime correct. despite this sort of strange behavior. Right. The police have not charged him. And in fact, what we've heard is that she was last seen on her computer, if these accounts can be trusted. And it's possible, of course, that she was communicating with a stranger and that she left the home yeah. of her own volition to go meet a stranger. That happens with, with adolescents. That is possible. And of course, that's what the issue is when, you gotta, when you're going to arrest somebody and you're going to prosecute them. You can think all the things you want about them. That this person is very creepy, but that doesn't mean they did anything. She could be living with a creepy guy who didn't do anything to her. She could have walked out of that house. However, the police have said some interesting statements, like they don't think anybody took her, which indicates to me they're talking about somebody who's near her that she knows somebody that did something home. to her. Yes, and the second thing is that she, it was said she was on the computer, but of course we're hearing that from the family. And the third thing is we don't even know if she even, if something was... Uh, written on her Facebook page, for example. We don't even know she wrote that on her Facebook page. Anybody can sit in the front of the computer and do that. So I think there's going to be a lot of analysis going back to the home. Who really did see her last besides her family? Was there any real communications where we could identify it was Selena? Or do we not really know that? And they're going to do, of course, the interrogations. Let's say that the stepfather becomes the subject of an investigation. Does the fact that he's been diagnosed with schizophrenia in the past give him cover for something? Yeah, I think it does. I mean, this is a world where we like to say people are are you know are just nuts and that's why they did something so horrible and since he's already gotten that label once it's going to be much easier for a defense attorney to actually push that as a, as a possible defense mm. uh, Pat Brown always great to have your Thank insight you. into this we shall see what happens after the autopsy yeah. today thanks so much for coming in thanks.